from Kansas State, number 18, Will Howard. Welcome to Orlando, Florida, and the KSO Show. I'm Mason Voth, joined by Derek Young of K-State Online as we get set for the Pop-Tarts Bowl between K-State and NC State. Wildcats finished the season disappointing against Iowa State. That was a month ago, though, and optimism is back for K-State football. There's a lot of excitement and energy for this game. Obviously, Avery Johnson is a big part of that, but there are a lot of other things to be excited for this game. Wacky Trophy, awesome sponsor for a lot of people I know. It's been a big hit already. Uh, but also there's some other stuff within the team and how things move forward. Colin Klein is gone. Connor Riley going to be calling plays for the Pop-Tarts Bowl. There is plenty to get to with this game. So, D.Y., I'll let you just start off by giving some of the things, can be one or two, that you're most excited about this Pop-Tarts Bowl for K-State. I think it's just the storylines in general, which you kind of touched on. You're going to get Avery Johnson at quarterback. His not his first start, but his first start at quarterback. Uh, he, he started. <laughs> to the sunshine here in Orlando and a lot of players that have left already. Um, we got a couple opt-outs, which I don't know that Kansas State's ever had an opt-out. So this is the first couple of those. You got guys that started for you all season or played a lot of football for you all season, not going to play in the game because they've already entered the transfer portal. I sum it up like this, and, it's a, it, and I guess it's a kind of a dreary way to look at this, but it's kind of what I've written, kind of what I've said on other shows. Technically, and I know that the, some of this is deceiving, but Kansas State will be without their number one quarterback, their number two running back, their number one wide receiver, their number one tight end, their number three defensive end. They've already been without their top two middle linebackers because of injury, their number two corner, and their number one safety. It's a lot of guys that aren't playing that played a lot of football for you this year. And one of the things that I always talk about is it's not about the guys that are coming up next, but it's about the the missing pieces and just the knowledge that's there with those guys. Now, in some ways, people are probably looking at this and thinking, hey, this is actually a good thing for K-State. You get a little bit of a youth movement. And it also sounds like guys playing in this game, they are the guys that want to be here this year. None of these guys that are left around are like, well, I'll just play just to play. Avery Johnson's a guy, there's a lot that he wants to play for in this game. First start, chance to prove himself, all these different things. And then obviously you have all of the seniors that are playing. I mean, a guy like Cooper Beebe, he is the guy with the most, I guess, backing behind him. If he had said that, hey, I'm going to opt out of this game, I think he is the number one guy that people go, I totally understand. It would, it would, it would stink, but I get it. And he's going to be here. Obviously, there's incentive for him to play. As, you know, he puts a bow on the career of I mean, one of the best K-Staters to ever do it. And I, I don't think that's something that should be lost in the shuffle of this game. Is This is Cooper Beebe's last time wearing a K-State uniform. And he had a Big 12 championship to go with it. Obviously, a lot of individual accolades. But I think because there were some years during that stretch where maybe – K-State didn't reach the heights that teams in the past with such great players did. I, it just it shouldn't be lost in the, the shuffle of just how good Cooper Beebe has been and how special it is that he's going to play one more time for the Cats. Yeah, I think it's understanding that Ben Sinnott's not playing too. It, it's along the same lines, maybe not as decorated of a career, still a pretty strong career at Kansas State and an historic one by tied in standards and a guy with you know something to lose by playing. So it's more than understandable. But you go back to Cooper Beebe, and you nailed it on the head. You got a guy that's a Big 12 champion. He was an Outland Trophy finalist. He is a two-time Big 12 Offensive Lineman of the Year. I believe a two-time All-American. I believe a three-time first-team All-Big 12 pick. A two-time Offensive Lineman of the Year in the Big 12. Um, it all speaks for itself. Those are the individual accolades to go along with the Big 12 title ring as well. 
uh, my New Year's Six Bowl appearance. Maybe a second bowl win if they can pull this off against NC State. A guy that will surely be on the ring of honor if he wasn't to crime against humanity. The best offensive lineman in school history. I think that's probably uh, maybe still debatable, but I think mo- most people would pick him at this point to be that guy. And, and I'll say this, and I'm not the greatest K-State historian with only being here since 2017, but a top 10 K-State player ever, maybe top five. There, There's certainly a case to be made for it. I mean, that, a special career for Cooper Beebe, and that's the kind of guy that, I mean, so many – K-Staters and great K-Staters, it's been from the state or from the area and they come to K-State and they overachieve from what was expected by them of outsiders and then they come in and have a great time here. All right, let's dive a little bit deeper into this game for K-State and the opponent NC State. Obviously, the number one thing on everybody's mind is Avery Johnson. That I mean, that is the big ticket item in this game for K-Staters, no doubt about it. And you think about Avery Johnson. We saw him at different points in the season. He never really had any struggles this year. The only time it happened was the Houston game. He fumbled, like, the first time he was out there, and then he didn't play the rest of the game. But – He's come through, and he will be the starting quarterback in this game, one of only a handful of quarterbacks left on the roster. What do you expect from Avery Johnson, just himself individually and how he works with his teammates out there, going to be a pretty good influx of guys that are either young or going to be back next season, uh, before we even dive into how it works with the offensive coordinator situation? I think we'll see flashes of brilliance just because of the spectacular athlete that he is with a very live arm. Uh, the upside, you'll see the moments of why he was ranked as high as he was, why he's this, you know, you know, people want to watch him as much as they do because he's a highlight waiting to happen. Every time he touches the ball, there's a chance of something magical happening. There's a chance of Kansas State scoring. It's it's that explosive element, component that they were really lacking for most of the year. Now it's kind of resurged, and it's back within what this offense can do and the parameters of it because of his explosiveness and the traits that he possesses. So you're going to see the flashiness of why everyone knows and believes that this kid's going to be special, has a chance to be one of the greats. But you're also probably going to see why he's only played three or four or five games, why he's still a true freshman. True freshmen make mistakes, and Avery Johnson – won't be the exception to that. He will make mistakes. He'll probably have a turnover or two. And, and, and something to remember here, this is his first start ever in college football at quarterback, and he's doing it against one of the best 10, ten defenses in the country. Yeah, and that defense did take a hit. They lost their linebacker, Peyton Wilson, who just days before the game decided he was going to opt out after seemingly practicing with the team up until you know just this weekend. And from a performance standpoint, number standpoint, accolade standpoint, I mean, he was a unanimous consensus All-American as well. He is their Cooper BB. Yeah, he. I mean, talented. He he was a difference maker. I After we learned it was going to be NC State, I remember going through and watching some of the NC State games, and like he just easily sticks out on the field. So it's big for K-State offensively that Peyton Wilson will not be playing in this game. Uh, you, you talked a little bit about what could happen with a true freshman at quarterback. So are you saying we see Avery Johnson's first interception on uh, Thursday night? I hope not. I mean, it's on the table, though. I mean, NC State is an opportunistic team that turns you over. They're plus 11 turnover margin. Kansas State's plus 10. Both teams good at that, but you got a really good defense that likes to capitalize in that way, and you got a quarterback in his first start. All right, let's move on to another big storyline for the K-State offense. One of them being Phillip Brooks and Ben Sennett not being here, so you lose two of your most productive receiving targets, but – the other major wrinkle to this offense is that Colin Klein is gone. He is at Texas A&M now. So Connor Riley, the interim OC, going to be calling plays for this game. What is the expectation for this game from Connor Riley, and what do you think that he will be able to accomplish in this? It's hard to know because he's never called a play before. So I can I can say what I think and, and what I suspect, but it'd be putting him into a you know a, a bag, and and he's probably going to be unique in his own right every play caller is and so just because he's an offensive line coach doesn't mean he's going to want to run the ball 98 percent of the time I don't think that's what you're going to see um I you Avery Johnson wants to throw it so 
uh, using him only or exclusively or you know most of the time as as a runner is probably not going to make him happy and at the end of the day you, you I know it's backwards from what a lot of people want college football to be but you got to do what's going to keep Avery Johnson happy at the same time especially when you want him for next season so I think you have to take that into consideration but one thing is you know been prevalent when we've asked about it over and over again I think the the trend is the offense isn't going to change they're going to use a lot of what they've they've been using uh, and do what they've been doing I don't think I mean one of the first things that Chris Kleiman said when he was asked about it was we were too good these last two years on offense to want to change so Connor Riley well I think what they hope is just keeps pushing the ball down the hill from what Colin Klein started and, and go from there. Um, and two, and two th- and one thing, sorry, one thing to keep in mind, and, and I don't know that it gets a lot of uh, publicity, is Connor Riley was very involved in a lot of the game planning aspects on a week-to-week basis, and not just because every assistant does it, and just his was an accelerated and ex- in, in a, in a significant role in that, and he and Colin Klein really became close because of it. So he might... <laughs> not have called plays the last two years. But aside from the play calling, what the Wolfpack do offensively to try and go. They've got a, an old quarterback, six years uh, in Armstrong, who was at Virginia, and now he's at NC State. You know, you know what? I got a question, and you might not even know the answer. It's going to be interesting. What grade was Avery Johnson in when Brendan Armstrong began, took his first class in college? Oh, boy. Okay, so let's – I mean, this is just – this is more of a math question than anything. So if, if this is his sixth year right now, uh, so his fifth Avery would have been in twelfth, his fourth Avery would have been eleventh, third, tenth, second, ninth, first, eighth. I'm gonna guess Avery Johnson was in the second semester of his seventh grade year because I'm just gonna assume that Brennan Armstrong was an early enrollee and came to Virginia in the spring semester. So I'm gonna say Avery Johnson was in seventh grade when Brennan Armstrong. Uh, started his college career. I mean, what do you have any any disagreements with that? You think that's probably a good guess? No, it's a great guess. That's why I brought it up. It's wild, and these and they're going to face each other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those two guys got to go do the exact same thing, play the same position with wildly different years of experience under their belt. I mean, that's like the difference between an 18 year old and a 12 year old. Uh, Avery Johnson can drive a car. I guarantee you he's got 12 year old family members. They couldn't drive a car if you threw him out there. Wild. Uh, Let's talk about the NC State offense, though, because from what I saw and the main goal of them, they're going to try and find any way they can to get the ball into Concepcion, who was a freshman All-ACC type guy. I think he was the freshman of the year in the ACC. Really talented, does a lot of things. Honestly, some of the way that the the NC State offense rolls reminds me a lot of what KU can do at times. There's a lot of pre-snap movement, trying to kind of get your eyes away from what's actually going to take place. This will be a good redemption game for K-State's defense, not just because of what Iowa State did to them at the end of the year, but also K-State's defense struggled early in that game with getting KU held under wraps. This is maybe not fun for K-State fans to see because of how maybe testy NC State's offense could be to them, but there's an opportunity for for them here to kind of right some wrongs and really put a good foot forward going into next year where most of the guys on the field on Thursday, they are going to be in purple next season leading this defense. Yeah, and our guy, K-Shooter Score fan, he put it 
probably best when you kind of look at them from a statistical standpoint. That meaning the NC State offense, it profiles very similarly to Iowa State, which probably before the Iowa State game, you're like, okay, that's good. Let's yeah. let's let's play. We got this. After the Iowa State game, we're like, oh crap, I'm not sure if we want to see that again. But they don't have the same explosive component that Iowa State has had throughout the year. Iowa State's one of the most explosive teams in the country now, offensively, statistically speaking. NC State's pretty rough in that regard, so that's probably a little bit of a help. What I will say also is Brendan Armstrong now uh, will be their their point man under center. Their best football offensively this year was probably with MJ Morris at quarterback, not Brendan Armstrong. So you're probably get an even lesser or, or, or a more inferior version of the NC State offense, so maybe that makes you feel a little bit good. Last thing I would say is their offense is Kevin Concepcion. You, you mentioned it. He's their second leading rusher and their leading receiver. So he does a, almost everything for him. They count on him for a bunch of their production. And their running game is just going to be kind of a mishmatch of everything because – Look, their their leading rusher is Brendan Armstrong. Their second leading rusher is receiver. And so their running back doesn't come into the picture until number three on their rushing list. A weird team offensively. If Kansas State's engaged, they show up and they play to their capability, which they didn't against Iowa State, they should be able to handle NC State's offense. Well, and thinking about NC State's defense, that's been the key to a lot of the Wolfpack wins this season. You go through and look, what set NC State up is similar to Iowa State defensively, or KU, I guess, is a better example of this, but big plays leading either to instant points on interceptions or fumbles or massive amounts of turnovers that just gave the opponent's offense no room to kind of make anything happen. And that's a big thing where K-State protects the ball on Thursday. I really think that this offense will be able to find a groove because really this, like what you said earlier, going back to Connor Riley, this is less about him trying to do something totally different with the offense, kind of what Colin Klein had to do. Colin Klein had to make a much more a bigger overhaul to the offense after Courtney Messingham than what Connor Riley will do here. This is about Connor Riley just being able to find his flow as an offensive coordinator and feel the game out and call plays in the right order, in the right matchups. And I think as long as K-State isn't turning the ball over, I think they're going to be able to find a way to do that against NC State. Honestly, I mean, this is we normally do best bets during the pregame show. My best bet for this game would be the over of 47. I think I don't trust K-State's defense early on, so I do think NC State scores in this game, and I think K-State's offense finds a groove. So I would say we're going to go over in points of 47 in this game. What, how does that sound to you? My score prediction would disagree. Oh, no. Okay, okay well, do, let's just dive into it right now then, unless you have anything else on NC State and K-State that you want to throw out there. Uh, the only thing I would say is, like, talk about guys that maybe you'll see that haven't played a ton this year, maybe a Chidi OBIs or – Maybe a, a Jack Fabris, Colby McAllister. Um, Try to think here. Uh, Garrett Oakley is going to be your starting tight end, and that's probably the guy I'm most excited to see in that role because expanded. And he's going to hit a lot more targets, a lot more action. Look, he's not there yet, but when you talk to people about Garrett Oakley, and it's like this guy can be better than Ben Sinnott. We don't expect him to be better than Ben Sinnott immediately here in the Bob Tarts Bowl. But we expect to see some of the same flashes that we'll know we'll see from Avery Johnson as well. Jace Brown's played all year. You'll see him. Trey Spivey, maybe, we'll see. And I think Joe Jackson might have to be the guy in the backfield behind DJ Giddens. Yeah, Joe Jackson listed with James White as the number twos on the depth chart. So that's a, a significant thing there. All right, let's dive into it. Prediction time then. I already said it's going to go over the 47. I really think that's what ends up happening. The only thing that could be a wild card, and if you've watched the show all year, you know that whenever I've talked about the weather, the opposite has happened. The rain is in the forecast for tomorrow morning in Orlando. It's likely to move out by game time. So that means you'll turn on your TV and it'll be a downpour, and I'll be wrong again. It'll be a hurricane out here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so we'll see how it ends up going down. I think K-State is able to feel their way through this game. I just think at the end, my perception of NC State, and look, I know the NC State fans were big-time haters in the YouTube comments when uh, the matchup first came out, and they're like, oh, these guys have never watched anything but a Kansas State game. Let me tell you, I did watch some NC State after that, 
and I was less impressed. No, I was less impressed. Oh. DY says they're good. They're fine, but I wasn't – I mean, I thought, oh, this team won nine games, six and two in the ACC, even though the ACC sucks, as we know, because – ACC undefeated champ didn't get into the playoff. Shout out to Fan for saying that. Shout out to Florida State for trying to leave. Yeah, and Florida State doesn't even want to be here with your uh, nasty butts. But I, I don't know. Like, I just there. I think there's a lot of flukiness to the nature of how NC State was able to win some games this year. They force turnovers, and I guess if you do that repeatedly, then maybe it's not a fluke. But when you're without your defensive leader, the best player on your team for this game, I, I don't think there's going to be enough there. So as long as this moment isn't too big for Avery Johnson, and it absolutely shouldn't be. As we've talked about before, he's overcome some really major moments in his life already. He knows how to handle big games, big pressure, and he's already played enough this year to step up. Like This is not a problem for him. He's been preparing this for all of his life. He's different than any freshman that you or I have ever covered or maybe any player that we've ever covered. This kid was had the composure to compete at this level, not the ability to size yet, but he could, his mental capacity and his calmness and his demeanor, he was in that way, he was ready by like age 15. Like you covered him when he was a true freshman in the Wichita area. This kid does not get rattled. Yeah, no, I mean, he stepped up his sophomore year and he just he slayed Derby for Mays, Kansas right there. And that was him and Josh Sanders were like, man, these guys can play here. Uh, little did I know that Avery Johnson would be the quarterback at K-State a few years later, uh, which as a, as, a, as a Cat alum, I'm very happy that that's the case. So I think K-State, I think this is going to be a game where there's some good back and forth early. By the end of it, I do think that K-State probably comes out with, I'll give him a, a 35 to 24 win. I think the Cats get in there. I, that would be my goal. Is find the end zone five times. If you do that, I don't know that I'm walking out of this stadium upset or disappointed with how the game goes yesterday. Unless the defense just says, you thought that Iowa State game was something? Well, <laughs> take a look at this. So I think K State wins 35 24. That's my pick. NC State is hot. They, they, end, <laughs> excuse me, they ended the season on a very strong note. They are one win from winning 10 games in a season for just the second time in school history. And the last time, 2002, when they had Phillip Rivers. Who do they think they are, Iowa State? Maybe. Ohio State won the national title. I said Iowa State. I don't know what you think I said Ohio State. Oh, yeah, I knew you said okay. but, but Ohio State beat NC State that year. Oh, of course. we got to throw Ohio State in here. All right, all right. Oh, hey, congrats on Will Howard being your next quarterback at Ohio State. Uh, that's that's not official yet, folks. Don't run with that. That's just, uh, hey, one of the schools he's considering. All right, you can continue. So NC State's hot. They have a lot to play for in this game because of what it would mean to the program's history. They have a quarterback that's five years older than the Kansas State quarterback. So experience matters, even if he is turnover prone. Uh, might feel better if it was MJ Morris, perhaps. But um, they have the, the better defense. Kansas State, a lot of inexperience. New play caller. A lot of guys that played not playing. It's just, if you really look at this from a, just a, logi a logical standpoint, a lot of points to NC State's direction. It really does. I got NC State winning the Pop Tarts full 23 to 20. Oh my gosh. Well, you're a hater. So, NC State fans, stay out of the YouTube comments. Keep them open for the K State fans to jump in there and get all over DY. Wow. I can't believe you. I, honestly, though, historically at K State, uh, bowl games have not been their thing. Historically, bowl games have not been NC State's thing. Well, it, it's a real who's who of who's going to overcome their struggles. They've lost three straight bowl games. Okay. Two, two of them are the Gator Bowl. Gator Bowl, whatever. You know, shout out to Tax Slayer, the, the sponsor or the former sponsor. All right, so if you think NC State's going to win the game, uh, if K-State would win the game, DY is saying that they don't win this game, but if they did by some, you know, miracle and, you know, the grace of God – uh, who are the offensive and defensive MVPs of this game for K-State? I had Avery Johnson offense. Who do you got? That seems like a cop-out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you... you not pick Avery Johnson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're trying to be genuine about this question, yes, you got to go Avery Johnson. I will say, though, I do think if K-State... I think a big part of winning this game for K-State can be DJ Giddens. I think a lot of times what you see in these games is... 
these teams either struggle to just stop the run or whatever goes down. Like, there are some big breakdowns. And we've seen DJ Giddens exploit some teams that get caught napping this year. There's a real chance that NC State does get caught napping a few times when they are without a guy like Peyton Wilson who has commanded their defense so well. So I would throw DJ Giddens in there as a secondary guy. If if at the end of the game the offensive MVP is announced and it's not Avery Johnson, then it has to be DJ Giddens. So I'll throw his name out there as well. To your point, which Big 12 team plays in this city? The Knights. Who crushed the Knights? K-State. Because of who? DJ Giddens. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. D.Y. is just finding the thread, and he's finding and following the breadcrumbs. Still not, the Still not picking him to win, though. All right, defensively then for K-State, if they find – Figure out how to do this. If Joe Klanderman gets these boys prepped and ready to go, uh, who is the defensive MVP for the Cats? I went Des Purnell because a lot of the playmaking and turnover forcing this year, he's typically played a big part in it. I would like to say a defensive end, but you know what the defensive ends have done all season? Disappoint me. Uh, so, uh, screw it. Khalid Dukes, last game at K-State. He's got to show up. He's got to show up and do something for the Cats. It's Cody Stuffelbean's last game, too. And Cody Stuffelbean. But I'm not going to say his name anymore. McPherson guy. Can't do that. So shout out to the Crusaders of Bueller. Uh, so I won't, you know. Cody Stuffelbean, I'm, great player, great kid, I'm sure. Just terrible school that he went to. So that's all I have to say. Sorry to the bull pups out there. Uh, all right. So that's the, uh, the, the predictions there. Look. I just think this is going to be a pretty exciting game to see. Win or lose for K-State, getting to see what this offense looks like is a major deal. And it's obviously already been a fun time for fans, for players, for everybody with kind of the craziness and the fun nature of the Pop-Tarts Bowl. Uh, I mean, talking to the to the, the the media director here at the Pop-Tarts Bowl today, and I just said, is are, is are these the two best sponsors you've ever had for this game? He said, oh. Absolutely. He's like, all the other sponsors have been great, but in terms of like the current era that we're in, like social media is such a big part of promotion for things. Pop Tarts has, I mean, it's been the buzz all week in college football Twitter. The trophy has been incredible. All the promotional stuff around this game has been great. And uh, then we'll get to see this mascot that somebody's going to get to sink their teeth into after the game tomorrow night. I want you to try to eat this thing. The mascot? Look, if you know your your KMAN history, um, this guy is not opposed to maybe doing or taking things that he shouldn't do at bowl game venues. The, I do own a Liberty Bowl Champions T-shirt with the Power Cat on it. That I how I, the limitations in Memphis, Tennessee on on maybe some petty theft. I don't know what it is. Um, uh, so hypothetically, I may have. Taking a pop, uh, a Liberty Bowl Champions T-shirt with the Power Cat on it a couple of years ago, but who's to say if I did or didn't do that? Uh, yeah, this has been a, a great time. We'll see how it goes. The cats are walking out there. We have some shirtless cats uh, currently. I'm gonna doubt that uh, True Carroll's telling them to put their shirts on since it's Florida. They're probably okay going shirtless, won't catch a cold. But that's probably our cue to get out of here. So any thoughts before uh, we we take off and go watch a picture get taken, and then go watch the Magic and Sixers tonight, and we can boo Joel Embiid, Kelly Oubre, and Marcus Morris. Let's go. All right, let's go. There we go. For Derek Young, I'm Mason Voth. Be sure to get all your K-State information on the recruiting side and the team side for basketball and football over at kstateonline.com. Just head to On3. Get signed up if you're not. If you're a member over there, you're going to get all the K-State access that you want. You can also make your own voice heard on our message board. So a lot of great stuff going on at K-State Online. We'll have full coverage tomorrow on Thursday for the Pop-Tarts Bowl on both the website at On3 and also on the YouTube page. So for Derek Young, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online.